everybody, this is Perch, and uh, here's a question, and I'm, I'm going to be very precise with the answer here. So, I, you know, yes, I understand that, you know, one thing can mean another thing, everything, but I want to be precise about the answer because this is one of those topics that people tend to uh, hide in the generalities. Let's put it that way. So let me read the question to you. It says, hi, Big Daddy Perch. I am never going to love that name. Okay. Um, I heard you discuss blacklisting before, and how it's probably less that these companies discriminate and more that they just hire friends or people they feel will be a good fit. Um, it's, it's a little bit of both, but, but it's more when the hiring takes place, it is definitely more, um, they reach out to the people that are, that are their friends. They reach out to the people who they think are not going to have drama, put it this way. It, it comics in this way does work like other companies. If somebody already has paperwork with the company, if you work for a company, there's often something called an MSA master service agreement. If you are a vendor into a big company and you have an MSA with the big company, it's easier for you to get work from them because you have an existing agreement than if you do not. Why? Well, because the big company will sometimes resort to, we don't like to do more paperwork, so are you already in the system? You are? Okay. And that 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 is often the case. With comics, it's definitely the case. Editors tend to reach out to people they know, people who are in their network, whatever it happens to be. That doesn't mean there's not a, you know, a blacklist as we're going to get into. It just means that the day-to-day -day hiring decisions are happening more in that way. And then the blacklist factors into it as we're about to discuss. So let me continue with the mail. However, I've noticed a trend online of people, including creators, finding work by Van Skyver, Dixon, Graham Nolan, and so on, which isn't them at their best and using it to kind of retroactively diminish their careers. Like, look at this trash panel drawn by Van Skyver. How do you ever get hired in the first place? This is why no one hires him anymore. Um, that that bit of text, or that part of your question, it really doesn't apply to the blacklist. I mean, do I see that kind of stuff happening? Absolutely. I definitely see, uh, you know, that kind of stuff go on. It, um, But that's just being people being churlish. And they do it to everything. It's like you saw it with, you know, even Asad Ribic. It's like, look at that panel where Captain Marvel looks old. That's a trash artist. It's like people will take a, a bad panel and everyone, 100% of people, yes, even Jack Kirby, have awkward looking panels floating around out there. And if you judge their career by those panels, no. Is are, is that panel, is a bad looking panel, why a creator doesn't get work? No, that has nothing to do with anything. People can say that all they want, but no, nobody, no editor, no company is going, hey, look at this panel on page 13. This looks terrible. No more work for this person. That's, that's not how it goes. Um, and then it says, uh, I think the mail continues. I think Neil Adams questioned if there was a blacklist years ago saying he wasn't aware, but if so, a blacklist wouldn't be good and people went after him for it. Uh, is there a, if there is a blacklist, is it more driven by politics or is it more a case of don't publicly criticize this type thing? It is more the second one, but it, it includes some of the first. But again, the word blacklist may be misleading, and we're getting there. So let me finish the mail, and I can explain. Uh, last bit. Just for example, I think. Uh, just for example, I think Richard Meyer could sell fifty thousand copies of Jawbreakers, and the big two even then wouldn't give him as much as a one shot. That is true. I, I, I don't think I'm crushing any dreams there, or, or, or you know, saying things out of turn. But yes, I, uh, you know. Meyer could have a million dollars a for every single crowdfunding book for the next three years, and they're not going to give him a book at Marvel. Not the current staff, no. So here's where some of you are going to say it's the same thing, but I want to be specific with the wording. Um, as, as I have talked to people at Marvel and DC, people do acknowledge a no-hire list. A no-hire list is made up of a couple different... Uh, there, there's a couple different criteria of why people get on the no hire list. But the common thread is this person is a pain in the ass to work with. Um, sometimes they've actually worked with that person. Sometimes they just believe that person would be a pain in the ass to work with. It's a no hire list that uh, usually the legal department and other places in the company uh, know of its existence. It works there. And if you're going to hire somebody, um, the company sometimes very you know boringly will say, we won't do an agreement with that person. Now, again, the specific wording is we won't do an agreement with that person. Not they're blacklisted, not don't hire them, but rather we won't do an agreement with them. 
which you might say, well, wait a minute, that's the same thing. Yes, yes, it is the same thing. Exactly, it is the same thing. If you're telling people, hey, I, I, I won't do an MSA, I won't do a contract, I won't, you know, we can't get a contract through for this person. In effect, that means, yeah, that person can't be hired. And it is a, you know, it is a blacklist, it is a no hire list, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it is fine, but keep in mind the companies describe this as a no hire list of people we won't do agreements for. Um, it's important that you note that, and it's important that you do not run around saying, Birch proves there's a blacklist. I mean, yes, you could call it that, but but again, this is where you know people inside the comic industry frequently will go, well, look at you, you idiot, calling it a blacklist. There is no blacklist. There's no hire list. And that's where it's, it's, what is the, 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 it depends on what the definition of the word is, is it's, it's that kind of statement. It's, we all know what we're all talking about, but we're playing this silly game with word semantics to, you know, to infer what's going on. But a, uh, the no hire list, um, at DC at Marvel, and I'm sure it exists other places, but I know it exists in both those two places. I've, I've heard it stated and I know people who have discovered they're on that list. Um, what they find is that nobody goes up to them and says, uh, hey, you're banned from working in our company. Um, nobody says, hey, you voted for Trump. You can no longer work for our company. They don't say that. What they do is they the work dries up and they just can't get an agreement through legal. So there's been cases, uh, four, that I'm personally aware of, uh, where I was hearing both sides of the story, where editors tried to get some work going with somebody, with a particular you know writer or artist, I'll name names in a second, but they tried to get work going with this person, only to be told, we won't do an agreement with that person, you need to find somebody else. You know, you can always take it up the chain and get somebody to override this decision, but that that that's the equivalent of getting like a Dan Didio or a, uh, you know, Buckley or somebody like that to, to authorize this, and no editor is going to do that. It's just not worth the time and the effort. Um, bluntly. They're, they're just not going to bother. So they're going to work with people they can actually get an agreement through with. So, you know, who are people who I've, I've been told are on that list? Well, yeah, you, you mentioned one of them. Dan Skyver is definitely on that list in both companies is what I've been told, you know, firsthand. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to send the guy a royalty check or, you know, whatever else goes on, but they're not going to give him work. That's what I've been told. Um... Other people on that list, I know Mags was on that list. I know Joe Glass was on that list. Um, and, and so let's look at those. So Mags has obviously done work for Marvel and DC and then just stopped. No work was coming. Um, you know, it could be in the future. And I, I, I strongly believe Mags will get work at, that, at Marvel or DC at some point in the future. I believe that she will. So it's not a permanent list. It just means at some point it will break free. What's an example of that? Mark Wade absolutely was on the no hire list at DC. Absolutely. Confirmed multiple places, I think, including by Wade himself, but you know, he was definitely on that list. And then enough time went by and people like, well, you know, let's relook this. I'd like to have Wade for a project. Why is he on this list? Enough time has passed. He comes off the list and uh, he's doing obviously a book for DC now. In some cases, the people who get on the no hire list are there because they just were perceived as, you know, saying a bunch of things against the company, um, you know, out, out in the wild. And the company's like, we're not going to employ that person until enough people have forgotten about it. And then we can employ them again. Sometimes it's personal. I think with Wade, uh, you know, Bob Harris certainly had a lot to do with Wade getting uh, on the no hire list at, at DC. Um, but, you know, these things happen. Why did Mags get on the list? I have no idea, but I had a number of people at Marvel and DC tell me Mags is on the list, that, that she's unhirable at this company. Again, heard the same thing about Joe Glass. And by the way, I'm telling you all, this is what I've been told. It's possible. None of this is true. And that, uh, you know, it was it, it's all crap. But I've heard this from many people within both companies. And I also know that in some cases, editors tried to hire some of these people and were told they couldn't. So I don't know how that was communicated back to the creative talent. I don't know what came about that. But that was that's this is just what I've been told, what I've observed. So who knows? And again... The no hire list does not appear to be written in stone. Things do change over time, like we see with Wade. Um, other people, on the, again, I have heard nothing. Just, just I, I've heard nothing to, uh, nobody has ever said that uh, Meyer is on any kind of no hire list, but I, I'm sure he is. 
I, I don't think any editor is going to run that up the chain. My feeling, by the way, is that the people who get on the no hire list have some kind of they they some editor tried to get them hired, and there was enough churn about it that they got put on a list at that point, and that's where you know that that's where things happened. So you know it's it's quite likely that you know no editor has tried to hire Meyer for anything, therefore he's not on the list. But in effect, he is on the list. I, I don't know. I, again, I've never heard. Um, I've heard very directly that Chuck Dixon is uh, is is not on a list, and he is hireable. And if they wanted to hire Chuck Dixon, they could do it. And I think that does ring at least a little bit true with, with DC at least a couple of years ago, had Dixon working on a project. Now, keep in mind, the editors may not pick up the phone and call Dixon, for example, to get him to work for them, uh, which is different than being on a no-hire list. Do you know what I mean? It, it means, like, just... The editors are deciding to work with their friends, deciding not to you know, pick up the phone. It doesn't mean you're barred from the company. It means no one's going to bat for you within the company. Now, again, to the creator, it, it kind of relate. It kind of means the same thing in the end. But there's a difference between having your name on, you know, in a file somewhere inside the company, where if you try and get hired, legal's going to block you, or somebody in the company is going to block you from doing it, versus editors are just not, you know, picking you for projects. So I think that's that's where you know there's some some difference going on. Um, John Byrne is an example of somebody that is I, I'm very curious. I have been told again, like Dixon, that Byrne is absolutely uh, hireable. He is not on any list, but um, there is a perception, you know, at a number of editors that he is his style is old school, or he's he is difficult to work with. They don't want to do it, or maybe he would ask for too much money. I don't know. There's there's a weird cloud around burn that I've honestly never been able to quite understand. But I've been told that, you know, the names I often get when I ask about this, or I say, you know, hey, who's an example of some people? I often hear, they always come up with the same two. No, Dixon and Byrne are both absolutely hireable. And then I often hear that for a while, Byrne was on a no hire list at Marvel, but he's, he's free to be hired now. But again, who knows? I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you what I've been told. I'm trying to think. I know I've heard other names that have been on these lists. Um, uh, the Gabe, the the, uh, the colorist, the one that had the interview a couple of weeks ago. I'm I'd be I've not been told, but I'm I'm sure he is on based on his. Uh, you know, he he went to the press uh, with his experience, and it, it created enough bad publicity with DC that I mean, he's he's definitely on a list there. I, I'd be shocked if he wasn't. Um, Feels like I'm. I know I've heard other names. I'm just trying to think of, of other people who have been on uh, some of these lists um, for a, for a while. Uh, I, I it was always rumored that some of the image guys were on that list when they uh, they broke away. But of course, uh, Liefeld and and Lee and some others did books, you know, with the Heroes Were Born stuff. So that that clearly didn't pan out. At any rate, um, I think if your question is, are the comic companies figuring out who votes for Trump and, you know, putting them on an official blacklist for the, for the company. The answer is no. Um, there are some people who have voted for Trump who apparently are known to have voted for Trump who work in the company today. And hell, if it's Marvel, you know, Ike uh, worked in Trump's cabinet. So, I mean, that would kind of be an absurd thing anyway. It's always one of the, nobody ever wants to address that one on either side, by the way. It's like, how do you explain uh, old Perlmutter? Um, that, you know, fine. Uh, but uh, at the same time, just because, again, you're not on a no hire list or, you know, a blacklist for all intents and purposes, uh, just because you're not on that list from legal doesn't mean that editors are still going to ignore you for their own reasons. And there's a, there's a, 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 a look, there's a 100 percent certainty, although nobody's in fairness, nobody's ever said that to me directly. The closest I've ever gotten was a female editor for Marvel who told me they would be uncomfortable working with a, uh, a Trump supporter, but they probably do laugh, laugh, take a drink. That was, you know, the comment that was made. And I think even at that point I brought up the, uh, well, you know, you know, Perlmutter is, is going to be in his cabinet, right? I mean, <laughs> how do you, how do you figure that one out? Uh, but anyway, um, but I, as far as I, you know, nobody has ever said directly, I'm not hiring people whose politics disagree with mine. However, people have told me directly that, you know, 
in their position as an editor, they try and give opportunities to people who, in their minds, deserve it. And what that translates to is, yeah, people who hold the same politics as me or whatever else. I mean, that again, probably not surprising where you work in whatever company you work for. I'm sure that people try and give hiring opportunities to people that they get along with. And in our highly polarized you know, area and their situation that we have right now, that often means politics. I don't think that's right, by the way, but I, I, you know, I, I'd be a fool to say it wasn't happening. Of course it's happening. So anyway, I hope that answers your question. Uh, that's, that's what I know. So, you know, th- there you go. Information passed along to you and you can do with it what you want. I, again, the disclaimer goes, uh, does that, does this mean that, you know, what I've told you is, uh, there's a different story out there. I'm sure, I'm sure there is a different story out there. Um, I, maybe there's a hidden blacklist. Just nobody knows about it. It's talked about, but I, I've been doing this for 30 odd years and I've been to a lot of cons. I've bought a lot of drinks and I've had a lot of conversations with most of the different departments within Marvel and DC and certainly plenty of editors. And, um, you know, I, I don't think the uh, lie would be held up for that long. Somebody would have cracked by now. I've heard a lot of dirty laundry. Um, but that's the truth of what I've heard from there. So, Anyway, there you go. Let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for listening.